If you're of my vintage, you'll remember the Fab Four, the Beatles. Well, I've chosen my Fab Four passages in Scripture where God commands us, invites us to come. There are more, yes. But these are absolutely stunning. And so we're going to begin with the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Let's read it together. Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your skin sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Come. Do you have a need to come to the Lord because you're feeling guilty? You're feeling ashamed. You're feeling embarrassed because of your track record. You're feeling uncomfortable in God's presence because of what you said or what you did that did not please him. God still says, come. Just like when we're children, we do something wrong and we go into hiding hoping their parents won't find out. God still says, come. With open arms, he says, come out of hiding. Didn't he do that with Adam and Eve in the garden? Adam, where are you? Not that God didn't know, but basically he was saying, come out of hiding. I know where you are, I know what you've done, and I still love you. I wanna offer you grace pardon. Isn't that what you need when you're feeling guilty, when you're feeling ashamed, when you're feeling embarrassed, and you know that it's not a good feeling inside, and you want to replace that bad feeling with a good one, and the only good one that can come is the good one that comes with pardon. And God says, I'm willing to pardon. He said to his ancient people, come Though your sins are like scarlet, they should be white as snow, they'll, they'll be red like crimson, they'll be like wool. Your sins are like red. I'll make them white. I will cleanse. In the Old Testament, as you know, it was all the sacrificial system of going to the temple and offering a lamb and shedding the blood of the lamb. But fast forward to the New Testament. We don't have to go to a temple. We don't have to offer an animal sacrifice. Jesus is our perfect lamb. So we can put on our New Testament glasses and read the Old Testament in the New Covenant way. Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they're red like crimson, they shall be as wool because of my lamb. Jesus and his shed blood and I offer you my pardon so if you came in this morning feeling weighed down by guilt and embarrassment and shame because of what you have done wrong or forgotten to do right God says I'm willing to pardon come and be pardoned the next passage is the words of our Savior from Matthew chapter 11. At the end of the chapter, these wonderful words. Congregation, you begin. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Are you feeling weary? Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling worn out? Life can get that way with all of its demands and all of its burdens, and you feel like you're burning the candle at both ends. 
are feeling tired not only because of life, but because of your job, even church ministry can be very, very tough. And you feel like a gear that's being worn down over and over and over again. And you feel, I don't think I have any more to give. I'm exhausted. I think we've all felt that way at some time, whether it be our work in the church, our secular work, or just life in general, with all of its demands. And Jesus, standing in public so that everyone could hear, gives this wonderful invitation. It was the first thing that rang true in my heart when I read the New Testament as a teenager. Starting at Matthew, I thought, interesting, 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 until the end of 11, and that's the first thing that gripped me. Come to me, and I will give you rest. And he says to us who are weary, who are tired, who are exhausted, come to me. Come back to me. Come to me over and over again if you need to. I'll give you rest. Learn from me. I'm meek. I'm humble. I'm gentle. Come to me and get in the yoke with me so that you don't feel like you have to do it on your own and do it in your own strength, but you do it with me. And when you feel tired and worn out, I'll recharge your batteries, Jesus says. I'll give you my strength. There is rest for the weary, and his name is Jesus. So are you feeling weary? Come to him for the rest that only he can give to your soul, to your heart, to your life. The next passage is also the words of our Savior from John chapter 7. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Are you feeling thirsty? Are you feeling parched inside spiritually? Are you feeling sort of drained? Jesus stood in the public place at the temple on the last and greatest day of the Feast of Tabernacles, a day when the priest would take water and pour it at the base of the altar, a very visible symbol to all the people who come to worship. And Jesus, with that going on, says, come to me if you're thirsty. I will refresh you. Are you feeling thirsty in your life? Thirsty in your soul? Feel all dried up? Well, Jesus says, come to me and be refreshed. Didn't he say to the woman at the well, I'm the living water? Drink from me? And you'll always have more than you need. You remember that hymn made famous by the Gaithers? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. And he will. You come with your empty cup. You feel drained. You feel thirsty. And say, Savior, you're the only one who can refresh me. And he will. And he does. But we must come to him by faith. and he will give it. The last passage is the last invitation in Scripture. The first one, by the way, is God's command to Noah and his family to come into the ark. And this is the last invitation. Revelation twenty-two seventeen. Let's read it together. 
The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. The Holy Spirit says, Come. The Bride, that is, the Church, God's people, say, Come. It's an invitation to salvation. Are you feeling empty? And those of us remember how it felt down deep in our hearts and lives and souls before we became Christians. There was that emptiness that nothing could satisfy, though we tried, and only Jesus could satisfy that. Feeling empty and come for salvation. And then we give the invitation to those who are still feeling empty, and they've tried everything in life. They still feel empty, and we point them to Jesus. So he's the one who can grant salvation. Only he can. No one else, nothing else. God's invitation to come. Are you feeling guilty? Come for pardon. Are you feeling weary? Come for rest. Are you feeling thirsty? Come for refreshment. Are you feeling empty? Come for salvation. Come, 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 come. God's invitation is a friendly one. He stands in our midst with arms open wide and says, come. It's yours for the taking. It's mine for the giving, the Lord says. Don't stay stuck where you are, but come and receive more than you could ever imagine. Come, come, come. And in the words of another hymn, come just as you are, hear the Spirit call, come just as you are. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to even be near perfect. You don't have to feel as though you have earned this invitation. You simply come. Come to the table of mercy, prepared with the wine and the bread. All who are hungry and thirsty, come and your souls will be fed. Come at the Lord's invitation. Receive from his nail-scarred hand. Eat and remember salvation. Drink and remember the Lamb. This is an invitation to communion, my friends. Invitation to the Lord's Supper. And as we did last August, we will do so again this morning. Differently than we usually do we will come forward from our pews to receive communion. There will be four servers at the front, two on the piano side, two on the pulpit side, holding the tray of bread and the cups. And during this time of communion, I ask that you step out from the pews Everyone come down the center aisle. If you're seated on this side, then go to those two servers. If you're seated on this side, go to these two servers. When you get to the servers, take the bread and eat it there. Take the cup, drink it there, put the empty cup back into the tray, and then return to your seats by the side aisles so that we don't create any bottleneck in the center aisle. I will commune first, then the servers will commune, and then row by row, starting at the front and moving to the back, come and receive communion. For those of you who feel unable to come or who would prefer 
to be served where you're seated, I will come to you and serve you communion in the pews with a tray of bread and a tray of cups. The last